Hey guys, this is Bob from Bob's EV Garage, back at you with another video today. And today we're going to be working with some of these e-bike chargers. These are fairly standard 36 volt 5 amp chargers, like this one here. 36 volts, 5 amps. And I've found that for a large device, like a, for example a moped with a 50 amp hour battery, these are too slow because I want to be able to charge in an hour or two and get out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these to make them one big charger. Now something I found that's really cool is if you orientate them in the right direction, so opposite one another, then you can actually click the casings together. You can press one in and they latch together perfectly. And so they almost hold themselves together like that. So with the help of these 3D printed covers, um, I'll link the um, 3D printing file in the bottom. And this is just the standard 40 mil fan uh, that comes with the charger. Uh, but you can put these on and when you screw the screws down, it becomes a whole unit. And it looks really good when it's done. So let's give it a go. We've got a couple things to do before it's all closed up. So let's get started. Okay. So the next part, I'm going to be working with mains voltage, 230 volts, so don't repl replicate this. Um, we've just got a standard mains cord. We've got our cable here. We'll strip it. And I'm going to set this into time-lapse mode because there's a lot of soldering and stuff here that you guys don't need to be around for. Just to know To be just a quick warning, electrolytic caps such as these store the high voltage rectified mains voltage. So they can sometimes have a charge on the casing. So be careful not to touch them or the circuit board around them. You could get shocked or it could kill you. side I'm gonna strip these wires and we're gonna match the voltages up I'm gonna aim for about 41 volts because that is enough to charge a battery to about 90% and um, that's all I'll need because this is just to be like sort of a fast charger I can use on the side of the road kind of thing so it doesn't need to charge them all the way up to 42 volts and plus the last like 20% or 10% of charging uh, takes place a little bit slower than the first 80 or 90 percent and that's just because the voltage stays constant and the current drops off so the watts also drop off fun little fact but anyway I'm gonna plug our supply in and I'm gonna adjust the voltages of each whoop, until they're well matched and all And all your fears have run aground. Then you said all I ever wanted was to... I've got a grid tie inverter. I'm going to use this as just like a load in order to um, set up the amount of current coming from each of the power supplies. I'm going to set them to about 7.5 amps for a 15 amp total charger. And maybe a little bit more or less. We'll see how it goes. glue gun here what I'm gonna do is just connect or oh, not connect but just secure all of the kind of the fragile wire 
joints within the device. Pretty much on the AC side because the wires are fairly thin there. Now also, just gonna add a little bit of insulation on, pretty sure it's these, but we'll do it on both, on the capacitors because when you flip the units together, the low voltage side of one and the high voltage side of the other will kind of be really close to each other. So we'll just protect those. I'd rather use some um, high temperature tape, but this should do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's probably a better way of doing this. And I'm thinking right now that this tape is probably going to act as a bit of a heat insulator. So parts will get slightly warmer. Overall, poor way of doing it, but I don't really have too much of a choice here. I don't have, you know, whatever it is, capped on tape or anything, so kind of got to make do. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is tuck the wires out of the way. we have got to figure out a place where all these wires will go so that it's nice and neat when we put them back together. Something like that. The wires will hinder airflow slightly, but there's not too much we can do about that. There we go. So, in this case, I've squeezed the top half so that it meshes. Let me bring it close. See, so it mes meshes with the bottom half and it like locks it together and see what I was meaning about with the tape? Very close together. Might even put some glue in there. Okay. Lovely. So, I should note, please don't try this at home. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that, but the biggest one is that I haven't got fuses on either side right now. And that's something I'm gonna add to this project. Um, I won't do it on camera because I'm going to have to go buy the fuses and everything, but yeah, if you do this, don't copy my video <laughs> and also use fuses, please, on the battery side and the AC side. Either way, we're going to put it back together now. We can use a little bit of hot glue around the connection point. There you go. And that would just provide a little bit of support so the cable is less likely to just pull straight out if, if for some reason it gets impacted or anything. So let that one set and do it on the DC side as well. And don't, rem don't forget, got to plug in the fans because they will be of utmost importance because this unit is being run at slightly over its rated capacity. So there is going to be more heat, especially in things like the inductor, that big coil of wire that we saw earlier, the transformer, and um, the power devices, which are mounted on the heat sink. Now I should note as well, the fan wires, very fragile. And you may want to just add a dab of hot glue fan wires to stop them from ever coming off the fan and thus being damaged. Lovely. So the hot glue is pretty much set. Uh, I'm going to plug in the fans and we'll screw it all together. Before I close it up, dab a hot glue on the LEDs and that'll just mean that they never wobble away and cause havoc inside the charger. Do that for both sides. There we go. We've got our charger. It looks pretty swish. And we've got, we should have 41 volts on the output here. Let's check that. 41 volts. Lovely. bit of context I attached the output wires to the battery on the outer two terminals and the input wires from the charger to the meter on the inner two terminals according 
to this diagram. length of wire here and we're going to slide the end through here so that the clamshell kind of construction or the two-piece construction comes together like so not like so like so and then we can glue this construction together but first we have to seal the wiring internal so I'm going to start with one side well, bump the camera and we'll go from there. project it's really helped me with my scooter I can charge at work now and it's really quick to charge in the shed as well so that's great it did have some issues with overheating I'd recommend if you do this project keep the amp levels the same for the individual charges so for this it would have been 10 amps versus 15 amps which I've set it to and you should have less issues with heating then either way guys if you like the video like subscribe and you can check me out on insta at an engineer for christ check that out if you like um stay tuned bless you <laughs>